I am now sitting in the Hyundai Kona Electric. This is the first time I actually tried Kona. I didn't even try the, the gasoline Kona. So um, what we're gonna do now is test um, highway range, which is like, you know, I'm going to cruise at 90 kilometers per hour. And then uh, maybe, well, we don't have too much time today. So I have to do like, I don't know, discharge the 50% or do a 50% discharge and then try to estimate the rest because I want to know how much energy is available in this battery there's lots of stuff I need to know I want to know but uh, let's start with this one Ooh, I don't like this you see uh, the display here looks very similar to uh, Ionic so if you know if you know Ionic then you know this is more or less the same except that now we can see how uh, how fast we are charging. So the, the charging power, yeah, 24, 23 kilowatts, Ooh, nice. Uh, so I think, um, I will see now if this um, this car will also stop at 94% like Ionic or if it, it will go to 100%. Um, it seems like actually it it will charge to 100% because it, it gives me a remaining time uh, there to 100%, not to 94%. Hmm, but it's gonna take a while to charge to 100%, but I want to do a range test. Well, yeah, but I don't have too much time today, so it's already 11.30. So um, I'm going to test maybe like a 50% discharge and then I can uh, estimate the rest. But let's just look at the car while we are here. So um, it's a very compact car, you know, um, it's like similar size to, um, to an e-golf, but this car is pretty fully loaded and it costs less than a base model Eagle for i3 and it's like okay slightly more expensive than um, let's say uh, Leaf or, um, or Kia Soul or some of the other cars and also in the same price range but 64 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, so uh, sorry for the noise we have some road construction out there but uh, just to show you how loud it is it is that loud. So uh, I guess the soundproofing is okay in here. Uh, we have electric seats for the driver and actually for the passenger also. I was like, I was reaching over here to find the buttons. I was like, whoa, whoa. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have a memory. So that's uh, that's a big bummer. I was looking for the buttons here. I was like, what, 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 what? No buttons, no memory, no memory, what, what? Um, yeah, the steering wheel seems to be taken from an Ionic. Also, pretty much everything here, like uh, the buttons, you know, all the buttons here. Well, except for this one, this one, head-up display. Now, the head-up display is just a glass. So, it's not like one of the like, more premium cars where, like, the BMW I had before, the BMW 5 Series, it was actually reflecting on the front windscreen. But at least, you know, you can you can turn it on and off. Well, you can remove it if you don't like it, if you, yeah. But uh, you actually see right now that we have speed there and speed limit. So, well, that's pretty cool. Let me see how much I have, 90%, okay. Uh, the, the display here is large and uh, easy to use. Uh, one thing I kind of, well, I mean, okay. Um, I'm used to uh, Tesla. And also, uh, if I remember correctly, the Ampere E, which also has a big touchscreen, you know, the screen here is very, I mean, it's just dead, like, um, it's dead, well, it's probably dead center, but also, uh, it's straight. It should be tilted slightly more towards the driver, yeah, but no big deal. Um, but at least, you know, the touch screen here is pretty nice, nice to, to use. Um, I have... Um, like, I don't like the touchscreen in, the, for example, the e-golf because it seems like you know the e-golf was uh, maybe it was based on the you know the, the i drive you know where you have like in the BMW you have this knob you turn right so the menu on the e-golf was not very logical for touchscreen but this one seems to be built for touchscreen so um, you know you you have large icons and you you just do it like this it's very intuitive when you go to one of the settings uh, vehicle. Then you have some more options here you can change, right? Uh, with large, large icons, large buttons. And also, this is also very, I mean, if you already know um, Ionic or um, 
uh, key or soul, then it's very, very unlikely. Man. I can't really find anything much different from this. Uh, uh, let me see if I go to navigation. Yeah, here you can enter address or whatever. Um, but this one, this button is slightly different. I was looking for the EV button. This is the the, the star button here, is the, like the so-called EV button you have in other uh, cars. And uh, now we see state of charge here. If we go in here, you see, uh, estimate range and all that. Uh, uh, we are DC charging right now, okay. Ooh, 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 I just came. No, okay, let me see how, how what you can lower okay let, let's not play with it because okay okay this is good it, it doesn't like update right away because we are charging right now uh so you can you can set the charge limit on increments of 10. can you do no okay that's that's pretty cool i mean why is this nice because if you charge to 100 percent you will degrade the battery faster so if you don't need all that range which is you know, which makes sense in the, in the battery big, that's this big then you can set it to let's say 60 or 70 percent and then you degrade the battery less um but here oh, okay okay i can't show you that i had to show it when it started but uh this car also has a uh, much smarter like um they call it heat scavenging so um remember the ionic has active battery cooling but it's just air cool battery this car has a uh, liquid cooled battery and it will reuse the energy from the motor to heat up the cabin in winter so it's much more sophisticated uh like technical wise than uh, ionic even uh but one thing i don't like is this big ass console here like it's uh, trying to show you let me try to open here let's show you. so yeah they they stop now maybe they have lunch the workers so See, it's like so they made this this bridge. It, it's supposed to be this wide open space here, like in Ionic, uh, and then they just made this big ass bridge with all the buttons and stuff and cup holders. So, uh, okay, it's nice. It's like shorter uh, to reach for the buttons, but it becomes way cumbersome to use that space under here. Like, like you know, when I sit in here, I want. How am I supposed to put, let's say, let's say I have this this camera, right? I have this camera, okay. All right, so I wanna put this camera under there. So I have to like, uh, 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 there, there, it's there now. Uh, uh, so this is a weird design. Oh man, and then I wanna take it out. Uh, just leave it there, let's leave it there. So I don't like this big ass console here they could have solved it maybe some other way but on the other hand one good thing about this is that uh, you utilize the space better because you see they have to put the button somewhere right so they put the buttons here they put the cup holder here uh, there's also wireless charging here uh, see it's active yeah so wireless charging on the phone that's cool you have USB there's another USB on this side there and then this thing is running now on the on the 12 volt outlet here it only has one outlet um, I only has two outlets uh, well, I went, unless I haven't found the second one but here we also have a big ass uh, storage here I put all my camera equipment there uh, and then let's test the ventilated seats Oh yes, oh nice, yeah. So, but you know what? Um, we can check out the car later. So, um, I'm still oh okay. Let's see. Uh, will it stop at ninety four percent? Probably not. But oh, you know what? Look at that charging speed. Oh, twenty four kilowatt, even at ninety three percent. That is uh, that is pretty good. I mean, if you try to do this with let's say a leaf or uh, ampere e <laughs> which has like well okay at least ampere e you know it would if i remember correctly it charges way slower at 93 percent even a tesla would charge pretty slow at 93 percent the 60 pack so um hmm, this looks promising i have to test the fast charging speed oh yes 
Um, but uh, you know what? We have a long day in front of us. It's 11:30. Well, a leaf just pulled over here. A new leaf. Yeah. I hope your battery is not cooked because I have active cooling. <laughs> but you know what? I'm gonna go to a, to a McDonald's. Go to the restroom. And then we come back, you can see how many percent we have, and then uh, we can do our uh, range test, well, the battery test. Uh, Alright, we are back, and you see that it went past 94%, which is, well, I guess, good and bad. Uh, but you see, it takes awful a long time now for the last 4%, 18 minutes. Yeah, so, uh, I can, in most cases, I won't recommend charging past 90%. Uh, this car has so good range, it's 445 kilometers, that's like uh, three, uh, uh, like 290 miles or something, quick math, uh, yeah, or 200, 280 miles, I guess, uh, so, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, let's go, uh, let's wait for 97%, it's gonna be freaking hard now, I have to calculate, you have to go from 97 to, let's say, 47%, yeah, and because I don't want to wait for the hundred percent, or should I? Uh, eighteen minutes? Mm -mm. Well, you know what? Let's wait eighteen minutes. Um, yeah. All right. So here is a trunk. It's not too big because, after all, it's a very small car. But let's see. Let me try to measure here how big the trunk is. So at least the depth here is seventy centimeters on the best. And then about 65 here, so like, yeah, it has like this small arc here. So I'm um, right about about the bit. Okay, you see 90. It's 94 plus this one is seven. So that means um, 100. Yeah, let's say 100. Then we have to add seven centimeters. So 100 centimeters here, uh, and then we have an opening here for some stuff. I guess you could take this one out. Let's see what happens if we try to take this one out. It's just some foam thingy. And then here we have, I guess, tire repair kit. We do have the tow hook and everything. So if you, for some need, reason, need all this space, could take it out. Uh, and this one, yeah, so, I mean, It's possible. But uh, how useful is it? Mm. Well, I mean, it seems a bit sturdier than uh, at least um, that's Kia, because Kia had that, that uh, active air, air cooling fan down here. But at least here, you could put some heavier stuff there. It seems to be a well for a uh, um, spare tire. Um, uh, well, you see some cables exposed over there, but yeah, I mean you could make the the trunk deeper in case you need to put like um, I don't know uh, a stroller or something here. You see, usually the the, the floor goes over here. Sorry for the lighting. Uh, I should shoot this in the parking garage or in the in the shade instead. But uh, we have very limited time today. So all right, let's. Um, but you know what? I want to see what happens if you try to fold the seats flat. First, we take out the partial shelf, which is always tricky. Okay, there. I have to just pull it like this. And then let's fold the seats. Uh, it doesn't fall completely flat. Let me show you here. It's like this, so um, there's an angle there, and there's no way for, I mean, you can't flip this one up or something like some cars can, so, uh, well, well, okay, at least it has this center armrest, that's good, with cup holder, no USB here, no opening for the skis there, so that's unfortunate, unlike e-golf, um, but uh, I think many people are concerned about the, you know, the flat floor, and now you see, it doesn't go completely flat. Well, okay, the belt is a bit uh, tangled up there, but uh, you get the idea. Now I have to test how big is this space. Now, I'm sitting here with like normal position. I'm 173 centimeters. Uh, so um, let's measure it. 
Okay, so the length here to that one is, ooh, it's only 145, let's say 145 centimeters. Yeah, and if you are longer than me, you might cut it down to about 140 centimeters. Yeah, that's not too much at all. I mean, this car, as expected, you know, it's kind of short and compact. It's more like a city car. What about if you need something big, like from Ikea? So, diagonally, you can put like, uh, I don't know, something long, only about 160, 160, maybe 170 centimeters if you push that seat all the way to the front. Hmm. And then as the width of this, the widest area here, uh, is about, oh, uh, almost 140 centimeters. Yeah, so that's pretty wide, at least. Because uh, many people also want to know if this can be used as a taxi. So we have to measure, you know, uh, how wide the seats are. So if we measure the seat, the seat combined is 130 centimeters wide. Yeah, and also this one, the seating height here is important. Uh, the problem with EVs is that there is a big battery on here that eats up the space. So what you want to know is that the seating height here is about 33 centimeters. That's like slightly better than a Tesla Model S because it's, you know, crossover style. But you see, you still have this, yeah, it's not like too comfortable. Uh, and I'm only 173. So people who are taller than me, they will be like this, you know. So not the best, unfortunately. Okay, so the car is charged to 100% now, uh, so we better hurry. But the last thing I will test is, can you sleep in a car? And most likely not, unless you're a small Asian. So I'm half Chinese. Let's see. This is very cramped, even for me. So, of course, if you're like a... If you're a woman, an Asian, you will fit here, but most people can't sleep in this car. It's it's too short. It needs to be longer, like Ionic. Yeah, so unfortunately, you can't sleep in here. Maybe one guy can sleep like, like this, uh, but that's it. All right, the car shows 100%. Uh, it's probably like 99.5 because we are consuming some uh, energy for the for air conditioning. So uh, the, the gum says 456 kilometers, but that's, you know, don't trust it because um, uh, people have been test driving and having high, higher average so we're gonna reset one of these and then off we go oh yes uh, one small thing though the the backup camera uh, the quality of the backup camera is um, I guess it's sufficient it's not like you know HD like um, well pretty much a Tesla but uh, it seems to be on par with uh, Ionics uh, backup camera and you have these guidelines here yeah, so it's good enough. Oh yeah, we are cruising now. Uh, we have the LKA or LCAS active, which is uh, what's called lane keeping assist system. Uh, it's that all stair system. Uh, it has been uh, improved. Uh, Hyundai claims that. Uh, to me, it sounds more or less like uh, Ionix uh, all stair. I just have to use it more to figure out. Well, I see. Well, it doesn't go on the on the right there. Um, it has some cameras in the front to uh, figure out where the lanes are, uh, and I also figured out that I have to cruise at 80. Wait, I have to cruise at 94 kilometers per hour in order to get to the 90 kilometers per hour real speed. Uh, so far, uh, consumption seems uh, very low. Let's see, 100, 130 ish. Yeah, about 135 watt hour per kilometer, but it's still too early. So that's why we have to do uh, a long run. And uh, we still have 98% battery. It keeps bugging me every time. Uh, every five seconds, it would do ding, ding, ding. Yeah, keep the keep hands on the wheel. Yeah. So um, uh, let me see. You can see the the head-up display is really nice because you know what? What I like about the, oh, sorry for that. Uh, there. So it it's in my vision. Yeah. It's like it's kind of hard to show you what it looks like around here like here you know this is by my my height of the head so it's it's down there uh, visible uh, I prefer I mean I prefer the the, the, the the more expensive type which reflect on the front windscreen but I guess this also works 
I can get used to this and what I like about the Ionic in sport mode is that I'm so used to having the speedometer shown digitally uh, in other modes it doesn't show it but here you already have it there so you can you can use like you know I use normal mode now and I have air conditioning on because I want to, to run this as like a uh, a more realistic test but uh, also do the 90 kilometers per hour test which is of course not too realistic for people who want to drive on the motorway but I will do another test after that this will be like the the mixed driving the one that will match EPA or uh, VLTP I've been overtaken by a bus now but um, yeah we gonna have you just have to see you see the consumption goes up it's now 150 so uh, over a longer course it will stabilize and uh, I want to know how much energy is available because then if you know that then you can estimate uh, range uh, later like when I do the high speed test 120 kilometers per hour speed test we have been driving for 18 minutes we done 25 kilometers uh, 140 watt up a kilometer so that is more than uh, Ionic but uh, compared to the other cars mm, about the same you know as like i3 e-golf uh, leaf whatever yeah so uh for like a crossover it's pretty efficient uh without the 95 percent and here you see uh this is a very nice screen i like this you see the the infotainment system the screen here has really high resolution it seems to have higher resolution than uh, the old screen so uh uh, now you see that we are using 10 kilowatt for propulsion. Climate control is taking uh, 400 watts. Electronics like I don't know, lights or whatever else, uh, some fans maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, 300 watts, and then battery here is the um, the battery heater. Yeah. So that one, of course, now because it's summer, it's off. But um, you can switch it on and off here. Let me show you here. You go to this one with EV settings and then the winter mode so it says that you know what they call it winter mode uh improved driving performance easy charging blah blah range will be reduced yeah so basically what it tells you is that there is a battery heater if you switch it on of course it will suck some uh, energy but it will improve fast charging uh, speed and also uh yeah, region if it's really cold now yeah so that's pretty cool uh yeah this you know so far i get the impression that this car is um, more sophisticated than many other uh, evs on the market like it has more of these like needed ev functions like heating and cooling of the battery and the more information here you know showing the the charging speed when we are plugged in you know it's it's so nice so um again i'm on my quest of finding out how far we can drive in a single charge we'll have to oh you know scale scale let's go ahead let's check it out so uh, the lcas will just it's active now i guess i can zero it out now i'm driving what is it driving for me no no okay it's slowing down now i like region level three let's weigh how how heavy the car is i have a little bit of equipment with me maybe that's like 10 kilos yeah roughly i also brought the umc i'm gonna test if the umc works with this one uh, but uh, I want to know how heavy this car is because one thing is whatever weight it is on paper uh, But how heavy is it for reals? Yes, okay, let me see Stop here. Bam Bam There both axles on whoa ho, ho. That is one heavy bastard 1.8 uh, tons uh, if you subtract the equipment, it'll be like well, 1,800 and then the driver is 70 kilos, well, 75, so, um, wow, 1,800 kilos, <laughs> oh, shit, oh, let's keep going. Hmm, and when it comes to road noise, um, soundproofing, uh, wow, well, this is just, you know, my, my impression of it but uh, we are on pretty rough tarmac here the tarmac on the e6 here is uh, getting old so uh, on rough tarmac like this uh, it's not the best soundproofing from uh, the wheel arches but um, the winds let me see car passes yeah okay um, soundproofing versus wind I have to test it on a higher speed but um, when it comes to soundproofing from the road uh, it's like you know in the middle there mediocre it's not outstanding but it's not that bad either so it's in the middle somewhere i guess i have to measure it with a with an instrument i haven't bought it yet yeah i should have this measuring device i might try it later today if i have time so again you know this is a very 
busy day for me, so I have to try to test as much as possible in one day. <laughs> and some of these tests, like the one I'm doing right now, takes a very long, long time, but it's for me and for other people, it's very valuable information. And again, well, as when I test this, I can also check out other things. We are down to 90%. Uh, we have driven about 50 kilometers, and you know, based on this quick math, it seems like we have 67 kilowatt hours available, but uh, we can't trust these numbers because um, we have very high uh, like um, uh, measurement error. So um, we have to drive it down to, uh, I'm not sure how far, but it's going to take a while, but uh, at least try to get it down to 50%. And I drive carefully now because I want to see uh, how efficient it is also, uh, because uh, yeah, but uh, if I drive too fast, we might have some heat loss, and then we don't get the right, uh, like the right capacity reading. So this one should be pretty accurate, but uh, again, it takes very long time, <laughs> and everyone and the mother is overtaking me. We just turn back now, and uh, you see in uh, sunlight there will be uh, some glare on the dashboard. So uh, some people can live with it, some people are annoyed by that. Um, yeah, as for me, uh, it's a bit, little bit annoying. Yeah. We have been driving for over one hour and we are finally down to 80% and we are done 105 kilometers. So quick math shows that we can drive over 500 kilometers during this speed. Average speed is like 86 kilometers per hour. <coughs> So, but you know what, I don't trust um, the state of charge to be linear. I've seen uh, that in Ionic, it's not totally linear. So um, that's why we need to drive it down to close to zero. And we need to go low anyway, because we're gonna charge on the 175 kilowatt fast charger. But uh, anyway, uh, what is important is the consumption. You see the consumption is down to 130. Yeah, it was hovering below 130 for a bit, so you can assume around 130 watt hour per kilometer consumption, and that is pretty amazing, because <laughs> um, the Model 3 I tried in the uh, US, I also draw the same speed, you know, try to, to match EPA, but the Model 3 average about 140 watt hour per kilometer, so this car is more efficient than the Model 3. What the heck? What the heck? Let me see, can you see some uh, efficiency, eco-driving, history, wow, okay, but that's pretty cool, but you know what, uh, we are getting close to Nebenes, I will stop for a bit, grab some uh, quick food, and then we should try the high speed test, we have to bring down the state of charge, and this is taking way too long. We are now at the, the supercharger in Nebenes. So I'm just parked here. I don't want to charge anything yet. Normally, when every time I park, I will charge. We have some fortune fast chargers over there, but I will not use it yet because I need to bring the state of charge down. But just look here. You know, it's almost unbelievable that that small car there has equal or better range than many of these Teslas over here. Some of them, uh, if they drive the same speed I did, might even get less, well actually 500 kilometers on most of these cars are not possible because they are, they are big and bulky and thirsty. So uh, compared to a Model X, you know, I have almost half the consumption as these uh, big cars, but of course they can carry more, more stuff. But if you don't need that space, then <laughs> Kona is like one third or one fourth of the price of one of the Teslas. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we will go inside and then get some snack and then I'll come back. Alright, that was a quick stop. I had some food, I went to the restroom and now we're going to test the high speed run, which is the... Let's do 120 kilometers per hour, yeah. So we have the trip meter here. Um, you see, we have... Uh, what does it say? A or B? It doesn't. Okay, they are not named drive info. Accumulated info. Drive info. Uh, brr, 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 brr. Wow, okay, economical. Uh, no, no. Okay, well, but, 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 um, I want, I need to reset one of the trips. This is like the, the total average, um, this is accumulated info. 
Okay, so we don't want to reset that one. We can reset this one. Drive info. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, but let's look at the settings here, by the way. <coughs> this one, head up display. Okay, you see display height. Uh, you can adjust how high or tall. You hear a little. Yeah. So you can adjust the height of it. Uh, I don't remember what setting I had around here, I guess. All right, and then um, how do we go back? Uh, mode? No. Uh, this one? No. Not too intuitive, right? Uh, I think I have to press the menu button. Okay. Um, driver assistant. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back here. Yeah, there's so much stuff here. So many settings here. How do you play display height? Rotation. You can rotate. Also, how you want this one? Okay. You want to rotate it? Okay, minus five, not two. Okay, it's 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 just minus five, zero, and then plus five. So, in case your your head is not uh, aligned. <laughs> okay, brightness. Ah, all right. Yeah, yeah. How how bright you want it to be? So, I set it to uh, fifteen. Whatever. I wonder if we'll adjust likely in um, tunnels and stuff. Content selection. Here we go. You want to turn by turn. You want to get info. Driving. There's lots of stuff here. Blind spot safety info. Ooh, let's switch it on. Okay, yes, as much as possible. Speedometer size. Ooh, small, middle. Oh, that is big. It big. Let me see. So it's it's set to medium. Okay, let me see here. Medium. Let's make it large. Uh, it's slightly bigger. Okay, but just speedometer. Okay, that's good. Lots of settings as always. Speedometer color white, orange. Ooh, 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 I like, oh, I like green, I like green, oh, yeah, look, look, look. okay, let me zoom in as you can see the different colors, so, it was set to white, like that, or you can have it in orange, or I like it green, oh, yes, yes, nice, nice, man, I'm starting to love this car, uh, okay, let me see, what else do we have here, uh, that one, the head up display, driver assistance, SCC response. Oh, what the heck is this? I should, sorry, I mean, I there's so much studying inside that I don't even know what the heck is. LFA lane following assist. What that is LCAS, right? Uh, they renamed it. You have speed limit warning, you have driver attention. Um, what was it again? High sensitivity off. So this is like something. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how he detects it. Lane safety, L key A. What did what happened? That's the L A L key A. Lane departure um, warning. Yeah, yeah. I don't want that one on. But uh, lots of settings here. Forward collision warning. Rear cross. Uh, <laughs> but okay. Uh, just we we can't just have one video with lots of this so auto lock. Yeah, let me see. Is it? And that must be okay. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Let me skip some of these uh, uh, lights just to. Um, one touch, yes. Headlamp delay. Wait a minute, one touch. Yes, I want seven flashes. Oh yeah, just like uh, Ionic and Soul, they have the same uh, setting, okay. Uh, actually, most Kia, so uh, I guess Hyundai have it. Sound, volume, uh, parking, okay, that's gonna be fine. Convenience, with this welcome mirror. Now, wireless charging it on, nice night. Wiper display, auto, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Smart recuperation. Ooh, what is that? Ooh, I don't want to know what it is. Smart recuperation. Icy road warning. Yeah, okay, that one's a bit annoying. I'll switch it off. But um, okay, back uh, service interval. Uh, whatever. Uh, blah, blah, blah. How can you adjust interval? Oh, okay, twenty-eight thousand kilometers. Okay, other features. Auxiliary battery saver plus. Oh, sure, that could be something to do with the 12 volt battery. Has been some um, problems with the 12 um, with Ionic, but energy consumption. Uh, okay, off. Yeah, I don't want it to uh, reset it. Consumption unit. Yeah, you can change. I prefer the kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, of course. Uh, temperature unit. Mm, yeah, Celsius. That's good. Uh, tire pressure. Blah, okay, blah, 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 blah. we don't know. We don't want to go drive. One drive. Okay, back, back, back. Okay, utility mode. Uh, what? The he no. Huh? What the heck is that? What is that? Scheiße. Okay, let's go. Uh, so, what we want to do? Accumulate the info. Let's leave it there. Drive info. Let me see. We did drive. Yeah, this one. Okay, let's reset this one. And then off we go. 
Okay, let me test the LKA. Well, you heard that beeping all the time, so um, you see we have some symbols here showing that uh, the well, I, just, I call it the LKA, but uh, the lane assist and the auto steer, whatever is well, what I mean, is active. So um, you can let off, let off the I mean you can let go of the the wheel, but uh, it will bug you every like five seconds. So let me just you just have to touch it gently like this. Okay, now it goes away. And then you wait a couple of seconds. I'm not touching the steering wheel. Actually, it's more like 10 seconds. Then it bugs me. Uh, there, yeah. So just never, every time that happens, I just have to like uh, give the steering wheel a little bit of nudge. That's the same way it works like Tesla or other cars that it, it feels you know resistance in the wheel. It doesn't it doesn't have any pressure sensor, so it doesn't it, it doesn't help if you grab the wheel or squeeze the wheel. You have to turn the wheel. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, what what you could do is just have like, a piece of meat on the wheel like this always. But oh, but then again, uh, just like um, Le Nissan Leaf system, you know, uh, the Pro Pilot, you are. It's like you are steering with the car, so and it doesn't have any like lane, uh, we call it auto lane change. So if I change lane like this, then I have to uh, change lane by myself. Yeah, uh, let me see, and then I have to wait for these icons to turn green again. Uh, there, there, now the car is steering again. Um, so, uh, my impression of this is that it's not that much different than uh, in, uh, in Ionic or in uh, LEAF. Yeah. Well, again, I haven't tested it in uh, stop and go traffic yet. But, um, yeah, you just have to keep one, one hand on the wheel like this. And it's like steering with you. So, you can steer, you can correct the course, and it will still steer. Uh, so, it works the same way as... Um, Pro Pilot for Leaf, but uh, Tesla's autopilot is slightly different. If you correct the course, if you take over too much, then suddenly you will be in control and you disengage the system. But this one is like active, yeah, until it loses uh, focus or whatever. All right, we are back at the supercharger. That was a nice run, and look, average is what? Well, shit, huh, huh? There, there. 180 okay that is not good <laughs> this is uh, okay uh, from my point of view I don't see the reflection but uh, yes there is some reflection because there's a piece of glass here you know so um, I mean they curved it to uh, to reduce the reflection but uh, from certain angles you will see the reflection uh, but anyway about 190 watt per kilometer when cruising at 120 kilometers per hour. That is pretty good. So we still have 52%. So now I better hurry uh, and bring it down low. You see, I spent way too long today uh, just discharging it uh, and I still have to go lower. So according to this uh, estimate here, I can drive to Sweden with this stale charge. So, uh, and the GOM still says I have 228 kilometers left. So, um, Yes, at least we tested that one. Uh, I'm going to test a little bit more. So you see, I spent a lot of time testing the the like the battery, like the the electric drive unit. Uh, I mean, the, the electric drivetrain performance because it's it's very important for many people. So, uh, but we will test some other stuff also. So, um, let's do this one first, and then uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, by the way, you know what? I checked this trip meter here now. So this is since we stopped at, uh, since we charged 100%. So we had driven 200 kilometers and we averaged 159 uh, at 52% stellar charge. So if we estimate from here, we have 67 kilowatt hours. Of course, I don't believe that, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I believe that um, the, the state of charge here is like not linear, but um, it could seem like we have um, we have 64 kilowatt hours available, maybe. Uh, yeah, because you know Hyundai, well at least Ionic says it has 28 kilowatt hours, and that is available capacity, not gross capacity. So this is great news. Uh, we can of course use these numbers to uh, estimate how much range we have. So so far, I can say that uh, on highway driving, that's the slowish driving and mix of like you know like. 
don't know how you can say it, like mix of city and some highway, you can expect 500 kilometers, 300 miles. And then for motorway driving, probably about 300 kilometers or 350 maybe. But uh, yes, okay, let's get going again. So let's test the sound system. So this uh, car is fitted with Krell sound system. I've never heard of that before, but it's probably fancy and nice. So I noticed it has a tweeter in the front door and uh, probably a mid bass or whatever in the lower of the door. And then in the back, it also has a mid bass or maybe probably a full range. And then in the trunk on the right side, there is also a subwoofer. So unfortunately, I cannot play radio whatever, so I have to play something from uh, my phone. So this is just a non-copyright song here. Yeah, I use Bluetooth, I mean, like the, not the best quality over Bluetooth, but good enough still. The sound is nice and rich. Ooh, nice bass. <laughs> this is... I can get used to this. But okay, it's not as clear as some maybe some of the other cars, but it could be because of the Bluetooth uh, connection. Yeah, but still, very, you know, rich bass. Uh, but uh, I have to see, I mean, it's it sounds nice and firm. Uh, because that's a, usually a problem with with a with a base in the trunk. For instance, in my Model X, the base is so far back there, it it becomes like sluggish and boomy and not so firm. But here, let me try again. Let me hear. Listen. Okay, some of you guys may be like. Ah! Stop, stop, stop listening to that freaking uh, child music. Uh, yeah, okay, but anyway, uh, let me play some other song. I'm, I'm gonna try this one because I know this one has has somewhat deep bass. So I'm gonna try this one. Okay, let's see. Skip a bit. Okay, this part is supposed to be really deep, deep bass. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but here it comes, here it comes. Okay, let me see, let me see. Let's try. I'll go press. <laughs> wow! Good shit, yeah. For people who like this, good shit. Wow, it's loud too. It goes really high. Okay, let's try one last uh, sound then. Okay, um, so I'm going to film from this perspective where the driver is. Hmm. I like the buttons, by the way. All these buttons are like. I mean, it has a great feel of quality. Uh, this is plastic again. This is like, I think, metal. And it feels good to press them, or you can like stop here, mute, okay, and start again. Uh, this one is for zooming in or whatever. Right now, we don't, yeah, don't even press this. Same goes for this, you know, for adjusting uh, temperature in the car or uh, the fan speed here. So. I like the quality and the feel of everything, like... Well, okay. <laughs> How do I close this thing? She. I'm stupid. Oh, uh -uh. Okay, you have to use some force. Hmm. Okay, but anyway, but back to the music. Bluetooth audio, let me see, media. Okay, again, you know, uh, I'm streaming from via Bluetooth, so um, the quality might not be the best. If you go to menu here, sound settings, you see that I use flat. Well, right here you can adjust uh, the position. We have volume levels here for, yeah, different. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Um, here by equalizer, it's set to uh, flat. Loudness is, I guess, 
yeah, how you prioritize the sound versus other sounds in the system here. So, um, and you have this beep button there that I disable. They like, they, yeah. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay. Hmm, alright, so I think that's it for the sound. I cannot show you, I mean, I cannot play like copyrighted music, unfortunately. But you know the LKA, the all stair system, will not nag you every 10 seconds. So, I mean, how useful is it? Well, at least when I'm driving now, uh, and I want to grab a drink, okay, hang on, I'm just changing lane here, there. Now I have both my hands free, so I can just grab, and, oh shit. I have to make sure that the system is active. Yeah, okay, now it's active. Then I can grab a drink. Yeah, so it is like, somewhat useful yeah but of course you can't just completely take your hands off the steering wheel like a tesla of course the tesla is way more expensive but the model 3 is like yeah down there still more expensive than this car you know what i noticed something when we are cruising at around 125 kilometers per hour there is this mid frequency whining noise coming from the front motor i believe it's the front motor it could be um Maybe the inverter, I'm not sure, but um, uh, it's not as high frequency as, for instance, um, the, the dual motor, model, model S or X. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm not too annoyed by it. Some people might just like, yeah, I don't like that sound, but uh, it's there, yeah. Just you have to be aware of it. It's, it's, there's a noise there coming from that one, but at least, you know, it's not as bad as like a fossil engine noise. All right, now we hit traffic and we can finally test out that uh, uh, autonomous feature, which is self-driving. Uh, okay, one thing I don't understand completely is that this one, well, okay, come on. Uh, normally when I was driving without traffic, uh, the lane uh, icon thingy was uh, green and also the, the steering wheel was green. Now the steering wheel is green and the other one is white, but obviously it is steering for me at low speed. Yeah, we're doing about 40 kilometers per hour. So now I want to see. Okay, huh. there. Let me wrap it. Okay, I want to see how long it takes before uh, uh, the car nags me to uh, touch the steering wheel. I wonder if it's different when you are like when you have traffic in front versus if you're completely alone. Uh, no, it seems to be the same interval, about 10 seconds. I haven't really counted, but. Uh, yeah, sounds like 10 seconds so um yeah there is probably I mean the self-driving feature is not something re revolutionary with this car it's just it's not really a self-driving it's just like uh, I think they, they, they didn't try to call it autopilot or self-driving they call it like you know uh, driver assist or whatever so that's pretty much what it is uh, you can't expect it to drive itself it's just a nice feature like I mentioned, you know, to grab a bottle of water or whatever while I'm driving. Or eat a banana. Okay, you know what? Uh, it's almost four in the afternoon now and uh, I still have to do some more tests. So uh, I won't finish within three hours. So I'm going to ask for one more hour. Uh, I said I will deliver it around seven, but uh, I forgot. I mean, I've been messing around too long, but let's call. I want to test the Bluetooth audio now. Call the guy who's uh, in charge over there. Uh, hi, Bjorn. Yeah, hi, Bjorn here. Um, you know, I was wondering, uh, I said I will deliver the car around 7, but is it okay to deliver it around 8? Uh, 8. Yeah, is that okay or? Uh, you'll have to leave the tree at the reception to the um, the Radisson. Okay, so I so I can I can deliver it at eight then or? Yeah, but please don't forget to leave the key. Okay. At the reception of the Radisson under my name. All right, and then uh, so yeah, and then I can still get in right and and get my car out and. Yeah, you can still get in. The problem will be getting your car out. Because I need to go into the city center. Okay, well, well, so I see. So the best is to deliver it by 7, right? 
gone the vehicle. Hmm. Okay, I will try to uh, push forward and uh, try to get there by seven then. Seven, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me see what I can do at this end, whether or not I can leave a, a car park ticket for you. Okay. Because but what you will have to do is, um, is take your car out with my ticket and then drop the ticket back to the reception for me. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so you can bring it back at eight if you want. Okay. Just I'll leave a ticket for you at the reception. Oh, yes, I see. Yes. Okay, hmm. under your name, but then don't forget to leave the key for the car. Yes. And the ticket at the reception for me. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah that'll work. Yeah, we, there's some traffic yeah, here. Yeah, that sound like a plan? Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Take okay. care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm not sure if he heard me well, but I mean, for the best test, I have to record myself when I call myself. Yeah, I've done it before. Uh, but at least, you know, based on what he's... He seems like he could hear me most of the time, but on the other hand, I couldn't hear him too well. So, uh, yeah, at least what... Uh, so I prefer using my headset. I have like a Bluetooth headset I use for for uh, conversations for the best sound so I'll have it here right here but I can show it there I, some of you guys have seen it already but we are getting close to Oslo now and we have lots of traffic so I'm, I need to I need more time because uh, you know this is my opportunity to test as much as possible so I want to do all that stuff uh, of course I spend way too long uh, um, testing uh, driver before like, uh, electric drivetrain performance uh, but I still have to test a little bit of other things here yeah but wow it's so much traffic right now so I have about four more hours to do my test then hmm. all right and you know what as for the handling of this car it's uh, well okay I haven't driven too much on like on a country road it's been mostly on motorways but at least when I go over bumps it kind of like it kind of like bounces a bit. Um, get the feeling that you know that this car is tall. I mean, it is tall, tall-ish. So um, it kind of like uh, the suspension has been set to be not too firm, not too sporty. And um, uh, so every time we go over a bump, it's like boing, boing, boing. You know, uh, similar to uh, the driving uh, on, uh, let's say, a leaf or maybe. A, yeah, because leaf is uh, the old leaf. The new leaf is firmer, but the old leaf is like is also a little bit sluggish. Or also uh, Kia Soul is like that, but it kind of wiggles. I mean, it's kind of like rolls a bit more in the corners. Whereas uh, the Ionic is lower and firmer, and also the E Golf is <laughs> it drives like a golf cart. Yeah, the E Golf. Uh, the i3 is like somewhere in the middle. You know, it's it's light, but it's also kind of tall. So. Um, like don't expect too much sportiness with this car that's what i'm trying to say um, i will test a, a little bit more on like twisty uh, turns but you know when i just drive around like roundabouts and stuff you know i feel like this car is like yeah it, it's like a boat a little bit like a boat and it's heavy also like we saw seen before okay here comes some turns and you know the this car has so much power, 204 horsepower. How much was it? Around 200. Lots of torque. Uh, so on the highway, it, it's like you can almost get a little bit sick if you don't, uh, if you're not gentle enough with the throttle. So it's like okay, it has an artificial lag like most other cars have. So, um, um, but then the power comes gradually, but lots of power. Okay, we have some traffic here, so we're gonna enter roundabout. Let me see. Okay, and let's see. As I mentioned that okay, this drives somewhat, somewhat like a boat. It's heavy, but then again, the batteries are low, so it kind of like lowers the center of gravity. But let's see when we have an opening here. Okay, so you wanna hammer it? It's not that quick out of the corners. Um, I could try sport mode. You see? Uh, okay, right now I'm limited by other cars, so I can't just drive like a stole the corner. Uh, but uh, let me try dry mode. 
Eco, uh, Eco is really like sluggish, but okay, sport mode. Now we are in sport mode. Let me see. Oh, the whole truck response changes. Like it becomes very, very um, sensitive. So just a little bit of touch on it. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> now we're talking. Oh yes, let's see. Yes, now it's way more responsive. Uh, I wish the region was more powerful though. Uh, even at the, the level three, the, high, the strongest region, it's um, it's not as powerful as i3 and um, uh, Ampere E. Those cars are really strong region, and of course Tesla. But yeah, some of you guys don't like me uh, comparing um, performance or, or features with Tesla because it's so expensive. But okay, let's say a Tesla Model Three then. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see. Let, let's let's try to hammer it. Okay. <laughs> I spun the wheels. Okay, let's try again. People will be like, "Shit!" Let's 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 do a launch. Okay. It just spins the wheel. It's so much power, and these wheel these tires are probably not the best. <laughs> oh, shit! I'm doing burnout here in my neighborhood. <laughs> So, um, let me see, let me try, okay, over speed bumps, how is that? <laughs> well, yeah, kind of works. Um, yeah, again, you know, it feels like the old Leaf or uh, Kia Soul. Um, but it has really short wheelbase, so you can... Uh, feel the bumps? Yeah, yeah. So, um, not the best comfort, but this is a compact city car, you know. 